faded. Zoom. Woke. Coyote. Cancel Ratchet. culture. Non-binary. Bubble. covid Digital blackface. Toast. Long hauler. Words change. They mutate. Morph. Change tense. Change meaning and new words are created. Old words fall out of usage. Expressions that everyone is using this week may very well fall out of favor in a month. And a paragraph that made perfect sense five years ago might sound really strange now. Journey Writers presents Word of the Month. Original poetry, prose, Essays and commentaries written by Journey Writers members exploring our ever-changing language. The word of the month for this month is faded. Don't do drugs. They are bad. I just wanted to get faded. What could be better? I was doing a training at the behest of my best friend Julie in Denver. Pot had recently become legal, and here was my opportunity. Julie sighed when I told her I wanted to have cannabis when I visited. I will ask Marlene to get you some, she replied, not attempting to hide her amused disdain. No, I don't want your assistant to get me dope. It isn't her job, and besides, I want to have the dispensary experience. We both knew that Marlene would be delighted to get it for me, but that wasn't the point. I could feel her eyes rolling with a smile over the phone. Okay, she responded. After presenting three grueling days of training to Medicaid staff who really didn't care about disability bias and ableism, I was ready for an adventure. Julie was a good sport as always, and even though she'd been in recovery for probably 40 years, she accompanied me to the dispensary. Actually, I'm pretty sure she wouldn't have allowed me to go alone. I was greeted by a hipster dude who used the phrase right on more times in five minutes than I'd heard since 1978. I want cannabis, I explained, but I don't want to smoke it and any edible will have to be gluten free. My God, I was that old lady. He presented the selection of gluten free edibles and of course I picked the chocolate candy bar. He warned me to eat only one third of it. I promised I would have no more than that. Julie and I went about our day where I got to see the site where the founders of a group called ADAPT got arrested for the first time in the 1970s to make buses accessible to people with disabilities and a disability rights museum. While it blew me away, I was eager to go back to our hotel room where I could continue my cannabis adventure. After we had dinner, we each stretched out on our own queen-size bed. As we exchanged family stories, gossip and disability movement news, I began eating the tiny amount of candy that I'd rationed for that evening. My previous experience with edibles was eating pot brownies a couple of times in college. About 20 minutes later, I told Julie that I wasn't feeling anything yet, but I was never going to do this again. Then my right toe began to tingle. Gradually, I noticed that other things were beginning to happen. I was expecting the mellow of my teenage years where I laughed more easily as my lifelong anxiety demon relaxed its tentacles just a bit. That is not what I was feeling now. I felt the need to be vigilant. My skin felt tight from the demon's tentacles. Out of nowhere, Julie asked if I was cold. No, why would you ask that? Because you're rolled up in a ball clutching your arms? She suppressed a giggle like a parent who didn't want to embarrass a child. I pleaded with the earnestness of a novice, faded for the first time in a long time, not to ever tell anyone about anything that happened that night. Being Julie, she replied, nah, this is way too funny. I decided that I needed to narrate every detail of this experience to her in case I lost the ability to communicate later. Julie responded by promptly falling asleep. Granted, she does this every night when she's done with her daily activities, which can be as early as 8 p.m., But still, she fell asleep. I was now on my own to navigate this one-third of a candy bar-induced nightmare. First, I decided I needed to make sure I was packed for the next day and that my phone was in a safe place. I guess my judgment wasn't that great because when I looked the next morning, I discovered my phone in the suitcase. Then I turned on the TV. It wouldn't bother Julie. She's impossible to wake up. 
I told myself when I could follow a commercial from beginning to end, that meant I was coming down. It didn't happen. I took the TV remote and used it as a marker in the bed. I could check where the remote was to make sure that I hadn't gotten too close to the edge of the bed. This made sense at the time. Another more familiar anxiety sensation possessed me around midnight. It was withdrawal of symptoms that I experienced when I skipped my nightly dose of Xanax. I've done it intentionally because my faded brain didn't want any more toxins in my body. But I didn't like where this was going. I would have asked Julie, but she was asleep. I decided to break the Xanax with my teeth and take half. It was actually not a bad decision. I woke up the next morning, aware of my surroundings enough to fly back home, but still felt anxious and displaced from my body. As I boarded the flight, I kept telling myself that I probably would feel normal again. At a layer if I called my son Nick, who I knew would appreciate this. He'd known that I planned to try edibles when I was in Denver. Nick, I said in a fake parental serious tone, don't do drugs, they are bad. I'm working now, so I can't talk long, but I know that we'll definitely need to revisit this later, Nick deadpanned. I just need to know one thing. Did we learn anything from this experience? We did, I replied. I boarded my connecting flight and got home feeling a little askew, but okay. Apparently, my faded days have eluded me. This is Melissa Marshall for Journey Writers Word of the Month. Faded memories of this old man. They say good black don't crack, but I know that's a lie. I can see it just in the corner of my left eye. Scarecrow feet where my lid and brow meet. And oh, these bunions on my sore feet that swell and burn at a good meet and greet. But why suffer defeat? Cause of these old feet. I just smile and profile and continue to eat. Speaking of which, Old men running the door, trying their best to even the score. On a daily walk to exercise, but the rain that was a drizzle brought this exercise to a fizzle. Wet and sticky, taking off moist clothes from these old bones, only heaven knows. These are the faded memories of this old man. I can hardly stand to remember how much time has gone by. In the barber's chair, getting faded hair, I remember way back they call this cut Covadis. Imagine if you can. Forty years have spanned, and I'm telling the barber, take nothing off the top, especially near my bald spot, and fade the hell out of my sides, young man. Yep, these are the faded thoughts of this old man. And when by chance or circumstance, I sit and wonder, look through my strands, I think of the wilted flower of a faded tattoo on an old man's body like me or like you. This world like a circus filled with clowns, grown ass men walking with their pants hanging down. Faded memories on my mind just then, rolling around again and again. Calling our women bitches and hoes, an incantation lamenting our woes getting high and faded and being in the throes of PTSD and being shaded by low-key haters who are lower than low. Yes, my baby boy and my baby girl, these are the faded memories of this old man. In one more moment of your time, if I can, I cast my mind back in the lover's scan that I should love again and again. Just that one someone, my ultimate friend, I've kissed so many warded witches and frogs, the bad ones thrown back were never a loss. Always peculiar, the ones who wouldn't stay, they let you, let them, slowly fade away. I always remember the sweet love as much as I can, cause these are the faded memories of this old man. This is Andre Kitt for Journey Writers Word of the Month. We hope you have enjoyed Word of the Month presented by Journey Writers Incorporated. Our organization provides a safe, supportive space for writers and those who want to become writers to share their work and receive constructive feedback. For more information about Journey Writers, 
our twice monthly workshops, and how you can participate in the Word of the Month, please visit our website at journeywriters.org. We'd love to hear from you. Word of the Month is made possible through a generous grant from the Betty Knox Foundation.